My guests today are Nick Simons and Cash Qureshi. Gentlemen, how are you? We're doing great. Yeah, doing well. So am I. Um, I wanted to talk to you all because a few months ago, I learned uh, about a framework that Microsoft had for a few years. It was new to me, but it's not new. And that's the one that you guys are working on. Tell me about it. Nick? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we work on a framework called the Fluid Framework. And uh, what it is, is it's a, a client-side runtime and a service um, that when you use them, you can build collaborative features into applications. So specifically, it syncs data between applications in a really simple, low-cost, easy-to-develop-against way. Uh, what kind of data are we talking about? What's, uh, is, it, is this databases? Is this in-memory data? What is it? So the scenario that it was designed for um, are sort of the typical productivity scenarios that you could imagine us building um, inside the Microsoft Office organization. So building applications like Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Um, the new Microsoft Loop application is built using Fluid Framework as well as Whiteboard. But we're we're actually extremely flexible and we're working on, on technology that allows us to scale to extremely large data sets. But so really any data that you could imagine storing as JSON, you could imagine using um, the Fluid Framework to sync between clients. And really the only limit to the size of that data is it all currently needs to be loaded into client memory. So, you know, 10 megs of data is probably a good, a good ballpark, but um, we're working to expand that to beyond client memory. Okay, so you're talking about the real-time data. So, for example, what we're doing right now, if I type something into the chat window, we're using Teams for, to record this, then you see it immediately. And that would be an example of the kind of collaboration. I don't know if your tool does that, but that would be the kind of thing that you might do, right? No, that's exactly what our tool is designed to do. So the we essentially imagine that you have two arrays, um, or sorry, you have an array in your data model, and you change that array in one client, the other client will immediately have that change as, as like it's effectively instant. Um, so uh, an event will fire telling the other client that something has changed and then they can update their view. Okay. Oh, yep. interesting. And and uh, David, you brought up the meeting notes in Teams. Uh, those are powered by uh, loop components, which again, in turn are using Fluid Framework underneath the covers. So, you oh. know, it's already pretty widespread uh, you know, adoption across uh, Microsoft uh, products. Oh, interesting. So um, so I've been using this for a long time. I didn't even know it. Yeah. Well, it depends if you're using meeting notes or chat. But yes, it's quite oh, possible you have yeah. used it and didn't know it. Absolutely, I've used chat many times. And I've used meeting notes as well. But chat, it's rare I have a meeting that doesn't, somebody doesn't type something in. Um, and so th I think it's fair to say that um, it's used a lot internally by Microsoft, but is it how how widespread is it used by the general public? So we have external partners um, that we are working with. Um, the two most prominent are Autodesk, um, who you who makes you know software like AutoCAD for sure. doing three D models, um, okay. and a company that's um, sort of very very big in manufacturing called Hexagon. Um, and they're building a new collaborative platform that sort of integrates all of their different product offerings um, for manufacturers. And they're using Fluid Framework to build that. We have other third parties also building, but really with Fluid Framework 2.0, um, we're expecting to see significant growth because it's much more approachable than Fluid Framework 1.0 was. Right. Uh, 2.0 just came out. Is, it, is that right? We released the beta at the beginning of this year in January. The beta of two just came out. Uh, have you announced a date when the general release will be? It's later this spring. Um, so, okay. you know, around middle of the year. Okay. That's yeah. fair. And uh, then, me, um, oh, was, yeah, sorry, we were talking about Microsoft usage in, within Microsoft and then externally. Um, Fluid is also open source. Um, and that's sort of, you know, the, the paradigm that we're following. Um, leveraging sort of the community uh, aspects of open source and really developing it in the open. Um, you know, people have reservations about, you know, adopting technologies that are uh, uh, used or uh, built by a, a, a large company. Uh, but again, with, with Fluid Framework, it's open source, all the code is there. 
community contributions are welcome. Um, and we've built it using the the massive scale that Microsoft has and you know all the lessons uh, that we've learned over the years of building collaborative products and and we've made it available to third party developers in an open source wrapping. Um, so you know it's it's really sort of the best package. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's kind of the best of both worlds. I think it's open source. You're getting the trust that you get by exposing your code and accepting community contributions. But you're also getting, you know, if you're incorporating this into products like Word, well, that's a massive user base that's pounding on this thing and finding out does it scale? Is it going to break? Who's hitting the edge cases? That's uh, uh, even if if I'm not using it directly, if I'm using it indirectly, that's I mean, who doesn't have Word on their computer? Um. Uh, what's tell me a little about the developer experience what how does one as a developer work with this framework so there are so essentially the 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 framework itself the, the runtime um is written in typescript and so it leverages web technologies so the sort of the the easiest path to using the fluid framework is you know building effectively web applications um, as your as your starting point, okay. and the, the 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 developer essentially, you know, downloads the runtime, and you get a set of libraries, and what you get from those libraries are a set of data structures that you can use, um, basically like any local data structures. So the you know arrays, objects. Um, you know, basically anything that you could imagine making with TypeScript, you can make with the Fluid Framework. Um, but unlike normal local data structures, just by using them, they synchronize between clients. So it it, it almost feels like cheating um, because essentially you create your data model and you write data to it, and then every client just has it. Um, the other side of the coin is you do need a service. Um, um, it's not a particularly complicated service, and we and we have two offerings. We have the Azure Fluid Relay, which is a service that is widely available through Azure, um, and that you can use to build your you know, your applications. You bring your own authentication and your own permissioning and everything else um, to that service. And there's a new offering that's just been released in preview called SharePoint Embedded, that also includes Fluid Framework um, as one of its components. And you can actually store files effectively in customers' M365 tenants, and those files contain fluid data. Um, so you have your client, which can be the same for both of those services. You don't need to really change very much code at all, um, just just with one driver or another driver, but the model is the same. And then your application code looks a lot like just using local data structures. Okay, so so you if uh, I can paraphrase that. The fluid framework client library is always required. And if you want to, you can use the fluid Azure fluid relay and or the SharePoint embedded libraries as well. Is that correct? I mean, you need to use something as a service. So you're going to okay. use one of those two or I mean, you have the there is an open source reference implementation of the service if you want to you know, take that on. We have had one one um, partner do that. It is a lot of work. Um, a big part of the value prop of Fluid is you can you can get started using the runtime and actually have a working application in an afternoon, um, like completely collaborative data storage, everything taken care of. Um, you know, building a service is is a months long effort for a serious large engineering team. It's not a small endeavor. Yeah, got it. Okay, and then the client library and the client code that's typically written in JavaScript or TypeScript. Uh, it's but, like it's, I as a developer, you can write it in JavaScript. That we have samples written in JavaScript. You know, the using TypeScript comes with a lot of benefits. Um, it's why it's so popular. You get type safety. You get you know you get a bunch of things that make programming easier. But sure. you don't have to use TypeScript. You can absolutely just write your applications in JavaScript if that's what you prefer. Yep. Got it. And and so it it's sort of you know friendly in terms of you can compose it with different 
front end frameworks as well. Um, so, you know, we're, we're not strictly opinionated about that part of it. We play well. Uh, we recognize developers have their own, you know, favorite frameworks, CS libraries, etc. cetera. Um, and so, you know, Fluid definitely works well with uh, a variety of those. Great. Uh, you mentioned version 2.0 just recently went to beta. What's, um, tell me some of the features, the new features are coming. I think the the most significant feature in Fluid Framework 2.0 is a new data, data structure. Um, so with Fluid Framework 1.0, we offered some fairly simple um, primitive data structures. The most commonly used was a shared map, which is just a, a set of a collection of key value pairs. Mm -hmm. And you can do a lot with that because you can embed maps inside of maps. But, you know, we got a lot of feedback saying that that wasn't as flexible or as easy to use as people hoped it would be. And so in Fluid Framework 2.0, we now include something we call shared tree, which is a tree data structure. And that uh, allows you to essentially model data using schema. Mm -hmm. um, so you can actually create classes, um, you know, put objects in your tree. Uh, arrays is full support for arrays, including having smart merge semantics so that if you have concurrent changes of an array in two clients, we merge those in a, in a rational way so there's no risk of data loss or or merge conflicts. And and that model is just much easier to use. It has a it has a much simpler API. It's going to be very familiar to people who are used to um, writing, you know, working against TypeScript data structures and um, and you could you know you don't need to have multiple data model data structures anymore you can build your entire application around one if that's what you want to do so i think that's the biggest new feature um but there are others i'll let cash talk about the other ones do it yeah so some of the other ones that uh, are upcoming are uh, a a developer tool um that uh, we're adding um and as part of this developer tool you know you think of a front-end developer's normal workflow they build their application in the ide vs code uh or you know any other ide um and then they're locally testing their application in the browser they've got their browser's uh, favorite browser, Edge, uh, uh, their you know dev tool running um, as they're uh, looking at the you know inspecting the UI, etc. Um, so we've created a uh, dev tool extension um, where within the same browser developer tool, there's a new tab for um, the, for Fluid, uh, which allows them to uh, look at the underlying um, you know components that are part of their Fluid application, including sort of the data structure they're using. So Nick mentioned shared tree. You can inspect what your what's the state of your shared tree. You know who else is in the collaborative session with you, so you can see what the other users are and things like that. So the idea is that you know developers as they're going through this, you know, build, uh, write code, run, test, workflow. Um, it's it's sort of a natural extension, uh, no pun intended, to to that uh, uh, flow. Um, it, it also we, we also have a Chrome uh, extension plugin as well, uh, in addition to to Edge. So that's one. And then there are a couple other uh, features that are uh, upcoming, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll release more information about it in the in the coming weeks. Oh, when you say you release more, where where do we look for that? So. All of this information is at um, aka.ms slash fluid. Um, and I don't know if you can do like a lower third banner, uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> or in the YouTube video uh, description, we can include that link. Um, uh, easy to remember, uh, but you can yep. also go to fluidframework.com. Uh, also also easy to remember. <laughs> also easy to remember. And uh, we'll be, you know, linking updates uh, as, as new announcements are made over there. Excellent. I'm looking at that right now. Um, it, is there a cost to Fluid Framework? The framework itself, like using the runtime, is it's it's an open source library. There's no cost to using it. Um, there is a service cost. Um, so depending on whether you choose to use SharePoint Embedded or Azure Fluid Relay or run your own service for that matter, um, services aren't free. There is no there is no free tier. Actually, that isn't entirely true. Um, it is free. For development, 
So okay. you can you can get yourself an Azure Fluid Relay and it won't cost you anything to do your development right. um, because there's a free tier, but it, you wouldn't you couldn't run a production service on the free tier. So got it. Uh, is there anything we haven't talked about that you feel is really important for our listeners here? Well, I mean, I always want to invite people to actually use it. Um, and I really want to stress that, you know, we just released the beta um, and we're we are still a, several months away from actually shipping the 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 final version. That's the um, beta of version two. The be version beta version two. Beta version two. Um, I but but we're really excited about it. Um, we think it represents a significant step forward for the framework, and we're you know if if you find yourself you know using it and have feedback for us, we are looking at GitHub discussions actively now. Um, we are very interested in hearing from folks about what they think of the framework, what they want to do with it, um, and uh, you know so you know. We really want to get people outside of Microsoft using it. OK, I'll put a link to the GitHub repository in the show notes. Um, that would be great. Yeah, so there's the GitHub repository. There's aka.ms slash fluid or fluidframework.com. Either one of those works the same place. Is there anywhere else, uh, any other links you can provide if people want to learn more or get started with this? Uh, we do have a. Uh... I guess, you know, X page or Twitter page uh, that we can also provide a link and people can follow for updates. Perfect. Uh, I'll put that in the show notes also. And there is documentation for Azure Fluid Relay um, that you can get to from fluidframework.com. And we could pro, I don't actually know what the ACA, the aka.ms URL for that is, but there is one. Um, oh, send it to me. I'll just put it in the show notes. If you yeah, find sounds it. good. Otherwise, sounds I'll just good. put the full URL. Uh, uh, YouTube doesn't make those links clickable. Well, so <laughs> it, the shorter ones <laughs> work really well. Uh, excellent. This is really educational. I, as I said, I just became aware of this framework uh, last year, but apparently I've been using it a lot longer than that. So <laughs> this is I got, I'm a little bit smarter today than I was yesterday. So thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, David. <laughs>